Hi students, welcome to another section of notes. These notes are about the composition of matter. Let's go ahead and get started. Again, remember because these are notes that are on a video form, you can always pause the video if you need time to write things down. You can always watch it as many times as you need to really understand. The essential question right at the top of your page, how can we classify matter using atomic level models? This question is really important. It's emphasized to let you know that, hey, these are this is what the type of stuff you're gonna be tested on at the end of the week. They're related to the learning targets. In your notes, you should draw this diagram. We're gonna fill this diagram out slowly as well as have a little bit of definition. So maybe on your page at the top, write this diagram out, or you can write it on one side and then on the back, you can write some definitions on that page. So in this flow chart, it, it says that matter can be classified in one of two ways. We're gonna start with the one on the left. These are the state or phase of matter. You might be familiar with the term state or phase of matter. Again, you could say it either way, either state of matter or phase of matter. This is just solid, liquid, gas, or plasma. Now, taking a look at the bottom, we see here that we have water in the form of a solid. Now, at the top, this is what the particles are doing. They're really compact. They're close together. And they're not moving very much. They are wiggling and jiggling, but not they're not flowing around each other. Now, if we were to add energy to water, maybe in the form of heat, we can melt water and turn into liquid. What happens is those particles get more energy and they get a lot faster and they get a little bit less dense. If we were to keep adding energy, again, in the form of heat, those liquid particles would eventually vaporize into the form of a gas. So here's our gas at the macro level. And then the, at the atomic level, this is what the gas would look like. A lot more spread out, a lot more energy moving very quickly. Now, the last cool phase is called the plasma phase. It's not very common on Earth, but it's super common in the universe. Uh, the sun, for example, is like a giant ball of plasma. What happens is, is these gas particles have so much energy that they literally split apart in a positive and negative charge. The positive and negative charge, which has since been neutralizing each other, has separated. So let's take these models and actually draw them in our matter flow chart. So we drew solid, liquid, and gas, and plasma particles in our flow chart and included this word down here, more energy. Energy increases as we go from left to right, as well as the density. The density decreases as we go left to right. All right, what about the other way we can classify matter? Well, another way we can classify matter is based on its composition. Now, the word composition here just means what it's made out of. So if we take a look at what substances are made out of, we can, we can classify them based on that composition. Now, the two compositions we're going to be looking at is whether, a, is whether a piece of matter is a pure substance or a piece of matter is a mixture. So let's take tackle those one at a time. Let's start with pure substance. A pure substance is matter that is composed of only one type of substance or one type of matter. That substance can either be an element or a compound. Now, if this slide or if this definition doesn't make sense, just hold on, we'll get to the next few definitions and hopefully it'll start to make more sense. Let's start with elements. So an element is a pure substance um, and that's because it's, and it's made of only one type of atom. So let's take a look at this oxygen tank here, specifically the oxygen in the tank. If you were to blow up that oxygen in the tank in terms of size and see the particles that it's made out of, you can see it's just made out of oxygen elements. In fact, these oxygen elements are attached to each other. So here's two oxygen elements attached. Here's two oxygen elements attached. So this container is a pure substance because it's made of only oxygen atoms. Now we can designate this molecule right here as to, in a chemical formula, it says O2, meaning that there are two oxygen atoms stuck together. Uh, we can even write the phase of matter right here. This represents that it's in a gas phase. So an element is a type of pure substance. How about compounds? Compounds are also pure substances. They're just two, excuse me, pure substances made of two or more different combined atoms. Uh, to give you an example of that, it might be hard to see here, but this is a jug of distilled water. Now, distilled water is not like bottled water. Distilled water is doesn't have any of the minerals or other things in it. Distilled water is just water molecules. So if we were to, again, increase the size of those water molecules and take a look inside this jug, you would see it's made of a bunch of these little molecules of water. And you're probably familiar with a, with a molecule of water. We say H2O. That's the chemical formula of water because it's made of two hydrogens and one oxygen. And every single one of these molecules is made that way. So this is a pure substance because it's only H2 molecule, H2O molecules in here. Uh, again, we're going to show the phase symbol with a little L standing for liquid. So let's draw those in our matter flow chart. Uh, take the time to do that. 
by the way, while you're doing that, we're going to add two more um, ways to classify matter down here. If it's a compound, it can either be an ionic or a covalent compound. Now, at this moment, that's all I'm going to talk about in terms of the types of compounds. You're actually going to talk about ionic and covalent compound molecules at separate units and separate modules later on. I just want you to kind of get a foreshadowing of what's to come in later weeks. All right, let's talk about mixtures, the other way we can classify matter based on its composition. A mixture, or mixtures are two or more different unconnected combinations of elements or compounds, and they can either be heterogeneous or homogeneous. Again, this slide is mostly a definition, probably doesn't mean much just looking at it. Let's take a look closer at two different types of mixtures. The first one we're going to look at is a homogeneous mixture. Homogeneous mixture. Homo means the same. So in this term, a mixture or a homogeneous mixture is a mixture with particles that are uniformly mixed or they're the same throughout. So here, let's take a look at Gatorade. If you've ever drank in Gatorade, this is just a sugary drink. Um, we've oversimplified this drink to be just sugar and water, which there's a lot more in there like food coloring and stuff. But if we were to take a close look, uh, here's what the particles would look like. Notice that there's water particles and there's also sugar particles and they're uniformly or evenly mixed throughout. You can drink all of the Gatorade. It doesn't matter if you start at the top or drink a little bit from the bottom, it's going to taste the same throughout because the particles are uniformly mixed. All right, heterogeneous mixture. Again, that's heterogeneous. Hetero means different or opposite. Uh, in this case, this mixture has particles that are not uniformly mixed. So let's take a look at this salad dressing right here. If you were to blow the particles up and make them bigger, you would see that here we have, there's still water particles in here, similar to the Gatorade, but there's also oil particles. Now these particles don't really mix well. In fact, especially uniformly. Some salad dressings you actually have to shake in order to get them to mix properly. There's also little flecks of particles here and there, and it's not uniform. Some of them take go to one side, some of them don't go to the other. It's not very uniform, so that's a heterogeneous mixture. So let's add those to our matter flow chart. Let's add those um, models to our matter flow chart, uh, homogeneous mixtures and heterogeneous mixtures. All right, guys, that concludes our notes. Again, you should take a moment to review these notes, highlight key terms and definitions, ponder and ask some questions. Go back to the, the discussions at the beginning of this unit, beginning of this week to ask questions and better yet, answer some questions if you feel like you're up to doing that. Answering questions is a great way to learn. Finally, summarize and answer the essential question at the bottom of this slide. All right, good luck, everyone.